Welcome, it's Peter Bowers, the cardiologist. Now today I wanted to focus on a review of a recent paper that was published in the prestigious New England Journal of Medicine. And this study looked at the use of salt substitutes. Now, you may have seen many of these products or healthy salts or diet salts. And essentially what they are is that they are a reduced form of sodium chloride. And that's essentially what makes up table salt. And they cut down the amount of sodium chloride in there and substitute it with a, another uh, mineral called potassium chloride. Now, the background of all this is that there has been a link with excess salt intake in certain individuals and high blood pressure. Uh, now, in those who may not have a vulnerability to high blood pressure, salt in the diet is generally managed very well by the body. Salt comes in, the body uses salt for a lot of critical components, and then any excess salt is often excreted out, usually by the kidneys, or of course when we're exercising in the form of sweat. But in certain individuals who might have high blood pressure, we know that there has been a link with excess salt intake and consumption to high blood pressure. We know that high blood pressure is a major risk factor for things like heart disease and stroke. Now in this study, they examined 600 villages in China. And in this patient population, they looked at a total of almost 21,000 people. 20,995 to be precise. And they randomized these people in the communities of 600 villages to continue with their regular intake of table salt or sodium chloride salt. Or a group that had salt that was substituted with potassium chloride. And they used a mix of about 25% potassium chloride versus 75% sodium chloride. And this group of individuals had high risk of heart disease, had previous history of stroke, were typically more than 60 years of age, and had a history of high blood pressure in the majority of people. And they followed this group up for more than four years as a mean follow-up. So that's a very long period of follow-up. And in the end, after reviewing this group of people, more than 20,000, they found that in the group that had consumed less of the sodium in the salt, there was a significant reduction in risk of stroke, cardiovascular events, and even things like death, versus the group that were consuming regular table salt made of sodium chloride. So again, this is a very interesting study, and it might not be applicable to you. For example, there are individuals who may not benefit from being on these salt substitutes as they have an excess amount of potassium. And potassium in excess can be a problem for certain individuals, whereby those who might have problems with the kidneys, those who might be on medication that raise the potassium level in the blood. So of course, any information we talk about today is very general in nature and purely just for educational purposes and to inform you of some of the latest research. So if you're contemplating any changes, please do seek the advice of your own healthcare professional. Now, the study raises several questions as well, and the study was done in a population in China, so we want to know, you know, how can we extrapolate that to other communities? They didn't look at all aspects of high potassium and what problems that may cause, but again, it does raise the possibility that by lowering the salt or the sodium intake in the diet, then we can see a reduction in events that lead to the development of further heart troubles, further strokes, and complications like that. So again, 
I thought this would be a very interesting study to highlight to the audience. I have had a recent video on blood pressure, so I please encourage you to click on the link below and explore that as it gives you a good overview of what blood pressure is, how we measure it, and what are some of the key things we can do to help control it. Until the next time, thanks again for joining me, and bye for now.